Good evening, welcome to another edition of Rolling Thunder Television. I'm Joe Kelly and I got two guests tonight, a lot of you are going to be familiar with. Uh, I'll introduce Randy Hemphill first, he's got a red shirt. And uh, this fellow over here is David Bad Boy McCoy. And uh, <laughs> there's a story behind that, we'll probably tell you about it. Of course, uh, they're a big part of racing in this area. Uh, we're getting into the history and how many how long they've been racing and all that in just a little bit. Tell you some interesting things about them. Um, we'll find something I promise to talk about tonight. Um, of course, uh, had a lot of racing this past weekend. Looks like we're going to have another good weekend for racing this weekend. Uh, Randy was part of the winning celebration over Westminster Friday, and uh, David Saturday night at Tacoa um, ran one fourth. Ran fourth. We'll talk about all that and other things going on at the area tracks on tonight's Rolling Thunder. Welcome back again to Rolling Thunder Television. I keep on saying magazine. We've been doing the magazine for about six years now. But, um, you know, we talked about the racing going on in the area, and I think that uh, both Randy and David both have been a part of the local racing scene for quite a while. They're fairly young. I'm not, you know, they're not old guys by any means. They're, still, they're getting that. Does racing tend to do that, Randy? Make you a little bit. Turn your hair dirty. Ah, well, okay. And uh, how long have you been racing? I started in June of 2001. 2001, so you're in your fifth, your fifth yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And David, up there, how long have you been racing? Longer than that. Uh, I think I started in 96. 96. I knew you'd been running for quite a while. A lot of your background goes back up to Smoky Mountain Raceway. I met there where your dad ran the track. And, uh, you know, I've said this before, and I, I didn't ask him about this on the other show the other week, but uh, I think to have two sons race and my daddy does, he goes out of his way not to show favoritism. Does he make oh, yeah. it rough on you? I'm not going to say he makes it rough on me, but I mean, whenever I come to the, to the racetrack, I don't want favoritism. I just right. want to be known as another driver. And, uh, but no, uh, he doesn't make it any rougher. Or, you know, if anything, I get. You know, if there if there's a new rule enforced, I'm usually the one that gets enforced on just to make an example. But I kind of like this. It works, doesn't it? It works better. It works. Let him be the guinea pig yes. first. No. no, no. Now I mentioned you won at Westminster uh, Friday night and in the limited division. Of course, you run both limited and super late model both now. And you've been running at Westminster and Dakota both. Um, you got some pretty stiff competition on Friday night from Tony Head and of course West Lincoln is coming on pretty strong too. Oh uh, yeah, um Lemon is no good. No. The late models there's a good group of races in this area. And I think it's hard for anybody to just come in and outrun people in this area. Everybody has good equipment. There's a lot of good drivers. I think you know David can attest to that too because he's seen you go around. He's the old timer in the bunch here. Yeah. But uh, how that is it, as far as cost goes, uh, as far as running, what's the difference cost wise between running a limited and a light model? Well, really, initially the, the light model is, is more, but I think in the long run, there's definitely a little difference. And like I said, the competition is so strong, you have to have the best of everything. I'm sure it does. Uh, I know, you know you, you've been racing since '96. I go back. We're trying to make you feel old. What I'm trying to do, so I'm trying to make you feel old. Before that, I can't remember. Yeah. And uh, of course, when you started, what class did you start? I started out in four cylinder. Four cylinder. My first car was a twelve hundred dollars car, and I ran it in the wall first week. Oh, first, well, that was good. Yeah. That was good. You didn't get a whole lot of return on your investment. Oh, yeah, we did. We got oh. a tree and dirt. I got oh. Oh. oh, okay. Now, when did you win your first race? Uh, the fifth time I ever Fifth time. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take you to get that first one? Yeah. It was my third year. Third year. It took you a while. Yeah, but it was a lot. It was a lot easier for me than where he came in. Well, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I raced go karts for several years, and that's why my wife's been racing. Well, I was a good driver though, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you found out I could drive as only good as anybody. <laughs> and then when I sat down, and it, it was a little bit different. <laughs> I think the thing about 
racing is it's something everybody can associate it with. And you think, well, I can do that. I can drive on the highway. A little bit different. Yeah, I'm not that good of a driver on the highway. Now you tell me. <laughs> now we find out. Watch out for it. You'll be on the highway. Yeah, that's it. That's the way you came on your own. <laughs> we got a lot more to talk about. We're going to talk about some local racing. We can find out if these guys had any racing heroes with these coming on. And some other stuff. Back again, the Rolling Thunder Television. Talking to Randy Hemphill and David McCoy, and David comes from, of course. Now your your family been involved in racing a long time. Well, nobody in my family has actually raced. But my dad, before I started racing myself, he, he supported a lot of races, helped a lot of drivers, and we just decided to try ourselves. I mentioned the producer, the Hemphill name on a lot of race cars. I've noticed that input and sound trucking. We'll get a plug in. We'll get we'll let you plug in here in a little bit. But now David over here, he he's uh, been raised. He comes from a racing family too, though. He, he, your granddaddy raised, did not he? Your daddy raised. Okay. Got brothers that races. And now you're racing, so you've got uh, my mom was the best out of the Oh really? Your mom was a bad I didn't know that. She's finding out something here every day. Yeah, my mom and uh, she won a track championship in that game. Yeah. Press, and, uh, oh, really? And she, I mean, she would go to Gaffney places that I, you know, that I'm just now going to 10 years into my career. And, and she was good everywhere she went. You know, and they called her the lady in red. Okay. Well, I know you run, you want, you run 187 in your car. Any significance for that? Um, okay, I just wonder. I just wanted something, you know, I'm not, you don't see it. So if they don't know me for you know, me, then they'll remember my car. So that's kind of an unusual number. Not that unusual, but you very seldom see three numbers. You run 28 for the most well, part. When I was young, I watched, I watched the last part of the event, and maybe I was one of my favorite drivers. You know, like we was talking about this earlier about my daughter. She's named after actually Bobby. I got to name her. But uh, of course, David was popular at the time, and she she was so good for seven more than David. And she did Bobby for a second. We watched Bobby and done both ways. And uh, what, you know, the old time. I'm about to get back in. A lot of history and then the race will get back to it. You know, I wonder how many people have been named after Valley down through the years. I mean, you wonder. Probably quite a few years. It's had a big impact on our, on our culture, I guess you're saying. Okay, um, you have been running Super Lake Mall at Limited Both. Uh, we talked a little bit about the cost of this thing now. Let me, I'll ask both of you this. I'll start off with you because you, you know, you're, you're to my right. I think that's the correct way to do it. No, don't feel left out there. I'll not get not to you in a minute. What advice would you give some young person who's getting racing now? Don't do it. Don't do it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really enjoy it, but it takes a lot of, a lot of money, of course, a lot of dedication, hard work. And if you, if you can dedicate to it, then it's a great sport to be in. Yeah, you have to love it. And, uh, it kind of gets in your blood, even from the way am I in the announcing and publishing and now the TV show and everything. The racing kind of gets in your blood. You have any advice for anybody to get into racing? If I like Randy, I would probably go to golf. Because I don't even own my own stuff, but it's, it's still very costly to get to races, you know, with the price of fuel and stuff. And all that. Like you said, you know, you gotta have dedicated people working on your stuff because your life is really you have to turn the branches on that car's hand. And I mean we're going so you know, eight hundred horsepower is what we're putting out. And I mean we're getting up there, you know, we're hauling the metal, so that's uh, true. What what's the top speed say that the car on the back of the front straightaway? Really don't know. I think it's been average about
feel like track record we wrote them for the years ago. And um, I'd like to say that the track record now 11.97 11 11 or something. And at that, that is moving. And I guess at the time, nobody would ever thought about running for a second. And Casey, the 99, he actually said that his motor skipped all the way down the back. <laughs> I don't know if this is true, y'all might have been over to see it, but tonight David Smith initially broke the record last year. Early in, you know, we had one night at the court where I think what four people or five broke the track record one night. Uh, the, and, old uh, the old record before we get up. And uh, somebody said he got out of that car and he was shaking like a leaf. Fast he wanted to go. I think if any driver tells the truth when they get out of the car and <laughs> get below 1230, 1240, if they're not shaking a little bit, they've got something going on. It's up the rock somewhere. Yeah, it, it's but extremely I, crazy. Yeah. Well, I think you got to be a little crazy to be in this business anyway. I think you have all your things. We're talking, tell you what, we're going to take a little break. We're going to come back and talk about the safety thing in the cars. There's a lot of safety stuff being built in cars now. We're going to find out about it. All right, we're going to come back now and uh, talk to David and Randy here about some of the safety features built in cars. And I know safety is probably, uh, uh, there's more thought goes into safety now than ever in racing. And I know even with all the safety features, there's still, there's still danger. How much do y'all think about the, 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 the danger? Do you really? I don't think about it. I mean, if you go out with an attitude, oh, I'm like, I don't think you're going to put forth all your effort and, and therefore you're not going to get the control. That's true. true. I had an incident last, I think it was in June. I got in a crash and I broke my wrist. I was out half the year. Next time I got in the car, he's going to try to make me think about it. Well, you won that next time, didn't you? Or was it a week after or something? When he got back? I remember he was, I think he was a week. Oh, okay. I think the very first time I came back, I got another pile of um, Yeah, but okay, I think she might have come back anymore. Yeah, I remember the night she hurt, and really, that was something I'll start with. Mm -hmm. And, um, and for all practical purposes, that I've seen you in, in a lot more serious looking accidents than that was. So you never know. No, it's not always the hardest lick that mm -hmm. hurts. <laughs> yeah, and that hurt, I didn't miss your wrist up and arm, but you came back and Forgot about you know. That's what you, Dave, you ever, you ever had much worse accidents? You ever, people don't like to talk about accidents, but you know this part of it. I'll forget. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. In all honesty, uh, I mean, like you said, but I think about it. But once you strap in that car, you know, and really the worst deal that happened to me last year was uh, I was qualifying Sugar Creek and Wood Ridge. And I was out there by myself qualifying and I just run off in the corner and I hit a rut and when I did it, jerked the steering wheel out of my hand and dislocated my shoulder. And so I'm sitting there and the record driver's pushing me, you know, and I'm like, my shoulder's out, you know. So, but that was pretty much, you know, like I said, try not to think about it. And, you know, it's going to happen. You're going to get wrecked. That's part of it, like I said, with the speed we're running, we're going to get close and, you know. Things, things happen so fast, you don't, you don't even realize it because it's already happened. I can imagine at the speed you're running now in all the area tracks, it just, it's kind of like it's over before you realize it. Because I've also heard a lot of times you sit there and you, it seems like it's running in slow motion. Sometimes it does, and then sometimes it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's over. I mean, I mean, I've dodged several wrecks that I felt like I should have got in. I'm like, how did I miss that? And then I've got in wrecks and I'm like, I don't know if you didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I had plenty of room to get away from. Well, you know, you, you've been in your share of now. Uh, I know both of you have won races. You've had great nights and you've had terrible nights. I know that. That goes with it. That, you know, something you got to get used to. It seems like something like you go to a racetrack and nothing goes together. Then the next week you go and everything's all right in place and it's all over your life. It's easy. How did that happen? I know I had uh, um, you know, watched both of you for the last few years. I uh, uh, who, when you were growing up, who was your hero? Yeah, I, I really didn't go to a lot of dirt track races when I was 
got Jim Officer uh, helping us. Uh, we got some good sponsors. I, I love my new engine. And, uh, like I said, I think that uh, we're going to have a really good season. Well, you know, I believe both of them will be right up the top every week. And we uh, got a lot of competition, especially at Tacoa and the other tracks. And, you know, with Bruce Taylor's won his year over there. You two, y'all be in here for the big lanes several times. More than one, more than one for you, I feel like. Yeah, never can tell. Well, that's true. You know, I think back on, on, I hate to bring up Bud Simmons, but the year he was trying to get that 1,000 win. He spent a long year that year and finally got it the next year, I think. He got really close and he just had a drive Yeah. Like forever. I don't believe I'm going to make it to the crowd. 100, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're, 24 shots. I'm still shooting 20. 34 shots. You're going, okay, you're going. <laughs> Y'all got a lot of year, years left, though, so I mean, you may do it. Oh, yeah. Of course, racing has changed a lot. It, it's not, let's face it, and uh, I don't want to make bug for anybody mad, but there's a lot more competition now than there used to be, I think. There was a lot of, you know, there was always competition. But you got more people now, I think, who can win. We can, we I, can think, win. I think a lot of that, I don't think the driving talent probably has changed. No. Everybody's equipment is just so close. If you yeah. think you've got something better than anybody else, you better look around. You yeah, it's 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 so better, yeah. Probably we got stuff that you don't even know about. Yeah. One other, you know, I appreciate y'all coming on the show. And of course, you live in the McCoy area. Mm -hmm. We live up in Franklin, that area, so they had to drive a ways to get here. We're at Reba's Buffet and Grill tonight, by the way, in Hollywood. Uh, Reba and Angus Hunter were nice enough to let us come do another show here. Uh, they're good friends of mine. they got great food here and a good place to eat. You can bring your family out and have some good food, and I appreciate them letting us do that. Well, I believe that's going to do it for tonight. We'll see you next Saturday with more Rolling Thunder TV. Thanks for being with us. How do we end up there?